reason I wanted to chat to you is because, you know, I just found it amazing how your love of surfing and skating has grown and it's, I don't know, it's just very interesting, you know? Yeah, no, it is. Uh, look, I always skated when I was younger. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, I had to give that up, unfortunately. And yeah. then, um, you know, cricket kind of just took over. And then I moved to Cape Town 13 years ago. Okay. And um, I bought a surfboard, but I bought the wrong surfboard straight away. I just bought, I, I thought, you know, like, got to get a shortboard. You know, that's how, that's what Kelly Slater does. So, you know, I made that's... the, everybody does the same thing, I, I suppose, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And now about, about a couple of years ago, I started like surfing a lot more, um, kind of found where I want to be, what I want to do with surfing. And now the beaches are banned. So I was like, all right, pick up a skateboard again and stop messing around with that. So, <laughs> Well, you haven't done too badly, re rekindling your love for skating. Yeah, it's been like 20 years since I've actually like tried anything, you know, like yeah, yeah. took it onto the, like, onto the grass. I've got fake grass at the back here. And I was like, oh, let me try and kick, kick it around a couple of times. I'll kick a couple of kick flips and you know, I'll do a couple of ollies and see how that works. And then, you know, typical sportsman, I guess, in, in me, like this, <laughs> I'm just like, Next thing you know, I'm on the road and I'm at the park. And yeah, now it's just like overkill. Yeah, I saw you skating the other day with Talento. Yeah, he's really good. He's really running good. A, a little skate park. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Um, that's cool. I'm going to try and hook him up with some New Balance stuff now because I was talking to him and he said he doesn't have a sponsor at the moment. And I'm sponsored by New Balance through cricket. So I'm like, all that's right, cool. well, you know, it only makes sense to try and help him out. Very, very, very lucky, Dale. Well, before we, before we chat more about surfing, I just want to show you something here. There's something that connects us, okay? I'm just going to show you this ball. But first, firstly, I want you to try and... I don't know if, you can, if there's enough light there, but I want you to tell me whose signature that is. Is that John T. Rhodes' signature? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's John T.'s signature. But there's... I mean, besides the fact that I'm, a, I'm an old Maritzburg boy myself, um, there's something about this ball that connects us. In 2005, I was living in Chelmsford in, in Essex. And this ball... Jonty, Jonty hit this ball for six at the Essex, uh, Essex grounds and I climbed up onto the roof um, and yeah, I took it to him at, at tea and he obviously we had a chat about Marisburg and then he signed it for me. But I find it ironic that, you know, when I was, I was reading your bio and that, I just checked, ah, oh, you played for Essex. So you lived in the, in the little town of Chelmsford. Did you live in Chelmsford? I stayed in Chelmsford. I was there for like four months. Um, I didn't play a full season. I stayed there. And that was in 2005. Yes. Yeah, it was in 2005. I was there. I was there in 2005. <laughs> yeah, that is the crazy. I was this young kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd been to England once before on a school tour. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm back at England. All they do is they just, they like, they book your flights and everything. And then some dude picks you up at the airport and he takes you and he drops you off at this house. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what the is going on you know and i just go into this house and they're like cool well um come to the ground tomorrow at 10 o'clock and then we'll get you we'll get you set up and i'm like all right cool but for that day i don't know where anything is there's no we didn't have iphones there where there's maps so you can go to the you know i, I didn't know you know i literally walked into the house i think i sat down and i just started crying i was like this is ridiculous but anyway yeah four months in chelmsford there was you know crazy it got better <laughs> Funny, funny, yeah, that, that, was a, that wasn't the, you didn't really enjoy your time there, I don't think, but what, what you've had to say about it. I think being near Darren Goff must have been interesting, eh? Well, oh, he's an interesting cat, you know, yes, he's, a, he's from Yorkshire, so firstly, just to try and understand what he's saying, is, is the, and he was bowling, and I would stand in mid off, and I'd be like, I watched this guy play a thousand Ashes games before, and I'm like, I'm trying to pass him the ball, and I just, I'd cock it up every time, I'd throw it, it'd drop by his feet, and then I throw it over his head. I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, I mean, it got like, at the end of it, it was actually, it wasn't bad. Like I met some good friends and um, Alistair Cook wasn't even playing for England at the time. We were playing together there. So was Ravi Vapara. Yeah. Ryan Tender Squad, who's from Cape Town. He, he, he lives in England, plays for Essex. Um, yeah. anyway, you know, making good friends. I didn't realize who these people were going to become. And now it's Sir Alistair Cook. You know, the guy played like exactly. 150 tests. You know, we played there together, uh, riding around in this little blue Peugeot. I don't know, like 207 or something. I don't know. It was 
Yeah, crazy times. <laughs> wild times, wild times. Did you go to the V Music Festival that happened in Chelmsford? I didn't manage to do any of the. I didn't manage to do any of the cool things that people do when they go overseas. I went to go and like work, you know, to go and yeah. play cricket. So, and we play five days a week. You know, you play a four day game and then you play a one day game straight after, and then you got a, you got two days off and then you go again. And that yes. was like that for four months. It was just it was nonstop. Crazy man. Yeah. Yeah, ironically, the, 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 the dude who's actually in business with myself and Anton at Feral, Mike, um, who's back in the UK now, he was at the match with me where, where Jointy hit the ball as well. So it's kind of a weird, weird vibe, you know, to have come from that little funny town. Eh? Yeah. I saw you in Musenberg a few years ago um, and I, you were hiring a board um, to go for a surf. And that's the first time that I thought, Dale's, Dale's surfing now. And I don't know, a few months ago, I was just scanning instagram and i checked your page and i was like wow the dude is like properly surfing and i spoke to ant and he's like oh he came in to see henry and was had a, a nice chat with you and that's what sparked my interest and i think our audience a lot of them probably don't know like your your your, your true love of surfing i mean your fishing is insane as well i mean we've got so many guys who follow us who love fishing as well um can we chat a little bit about like your love of fishing as well yeah, bro, of course. Um, well, I grew up, I grew up in Palabora, which is, the, that's the crazy thing, because I grew up in Palabora, which is like, in the Kruger, yes. in the Kruger National Park. We're nowhere near, like, a skate park, or the ocean, for that matter, you know, and um, so when I was young, we, I just spent a lot of time in the bush. I, I, I did a lot of hunting, and I did a lot, a lot of fishing. Like, I did more fishing than I did hunting, but when you grow up in the bush, it's part of the kind of life that you live that you're going to shoot something at some point in time you know sure. it's just how it is but yeah i grew up fishing and my best friend um his dad used to be a bass master oh wow um, yeah so we used to get like we had endless supply of free like soft plastics like worms and you know bass bass stuff basically so we just go and um we'd jump on my dad's motorbike and just go from like farm to farm and find dams and just race around and just go bass fishing you know that and guy. like yeah, I just loved fishing, really. And then I went to school in Zanin, and Fani Bota Dam is there. I don't know if it's got another name, but I know it is Fani Bota Dam. It's one of the better bass dams in the in the country. Yeah. Um. So we used to, I used to, I went to school on the dam at Marinsky High School, and uh, in the afternoons I would slip down to the dam and go and fish, you know, from the banks. So I just grew up fishing. That's that's what I what I do, you know. And even now, like. Now it's quite nice. I, I've, I've got a job that pays me well and I've got friends that are good fishermen and they're like, we've got to go to Bolivia. And I'm like, let's go to Bolivia. And we, then we've got to go to Botswana. And I'm like, let's go to Botswana, you know? And now Beautiful. we just do this, do this stuff, you know? And, um, but I'll never go alone. I always, I always take my best mate with me. Um, you know, we kind of done everything together. So any trip that I do, if, if he's not coming, then I don't go. That's cool. That's like a, yeah, and I haven't seen him in a year and a half, and he's actually he's coming down this Thursday. He's coming to visit me for five days. So All I'm right. Very Get getting getting the tackle box ready. Everything's ready downstairs. He's got a <laughs> he's got a eight year old son, seven eight year old son. I can't remember who also is a is a good fisherman. Wow. And um, yeah, I've lined up a couple of trout dams and bass dams out in Stellenbosch, and we'll uh, and Franschuk, and we'll hit them next weekend. So yeah, very so. lucky. Yeah, I've got a mate who owns a couple of lodges up on the Chobe, You know. And yeah, some, yeah. oh man, tiger fishing there is just absolute the bomb, you know. It's, oh, we've been it's, we've been going. We would go twice a year up until COVID hit us. You know, we'd go and try and get in early June, and then again in August. You know, whatever it is, like obviously winter, best time. And um, but then when COVID hit last year, it just kind of came to this grinding halt. So yeah. I'm trying to get back out there. I've got. A bunch of stuff that i want to try and yeah love it cool it's, epic. it's a great place <laughs> yeah it's just the wildlife is prolific it's everywhere it's it's, it's a sensory overload eh? yeah it's i mean and where i grew up when i grew up in in palabora like i'd wake up and i'd have all sorts of whatever it is that are on my lawn you know i'd have warthog and impala and then we'd be walking to school and there'd be like a massive um herd of elephants and it's like oh you can't go this way you have to go that way and then the cops would be there and they're like there's two male lions in this little place so you know go that way around and that was just a way of life you know so like now 
you can't find that anywhere else yeah you know so now i have to go to the chobi if i want to go and have that relive those experiences you know you got to go to places like that so it's cool that you get to do it man how awesome is that that you that your lifestyle allows you to do it and it's it's nice for others to hear it and and uh, you know see it yeah i pretty much work so i can make enough money so i can pay for my fishing trips <laughs> <laughs> i work to fish not the other way around and um, tell me what you're riding these days in terms of, of surfboards. You're, you're logging a lot, eh? Yeah, so I, I got, like, I, I think I made, the, I made the biggest mistake firstly of buying a shortboard and then trying to surf and not catching enough waves and just being absolutely useless. And then putting the board in the garage and then not touching it for like a couple of years because I was like, that's too difficult. Like, yeah. And then I had some friends that introduced me to riding longer boards and... Um, so I got a, I, I must be honest, I got a spider longboard to start off with. And I surfed that for like three months. And then I started, my friend owned Surf Emporium and I started renting one or two of the better logs they had. They had like their soil logs and stuff like that. Yeah. So I started renting them because they were just so much better. And I think my surfing had improved. And now like I just, I literally log all the time. Like I, if I can just ride a longboard, I will. Um, but I got hold of the guys from Channel Islands and they, they hooked me up with one of their new mid lengths. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm coming down now. So I'm going to kind of bounce between like the, the mid lengths and the logs. That's, that's where I'm going to live. I, I'm never going to do the airs that these guys are doing at, in, in Komiki. You know, you watch like Manoa Rob and Eli Birkes and these kids that are, I'm in the water with and I'm watching them do this stuff. And I'm just like, guys, I'm, I'm not 20 anymore. I'm not going to do that. You know, yeah. I just want to gracefully get from here to the other side. Like, yeah. And then just enjoy the show from the sidelines. Yeah. And if yeah. I can learn how to do a couple of things along the way, like, you know, walk to the nose and, you know, whatever it is that I'm trying to do, that's, that's cool too. Yeah. Like, yeah, those CR mid lengths are beautiful. Like Kai, um, Captain Kai, who we've also had on the podcast, um, did a review this week of that, that CR mid-length. And it's a beautiful looking board. Eh? The, the volume is lovely. And I mean, it, you, can, you can still turn it on a dime. It's, um, I, I was amazed because I just, I wanted something that I could like paddle into waves a lot, you know, because I'm riding logs now. So I, I cheat, you know, I catch a ton more waves than the guys on the shortboards. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to jump onto a shortboard where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sickle for like two hours, you know? Yeah, so yeah. You know, I got into this thing and I was just blown away at how easy it paddles and then how quickly it turns and it moves. And then I actually fell a bunch of times because I'm riding big single fin logs and they don't turn like that. They take forever to kind of turn, you know, and yeah. then you just move your, your shoulder and bang, this thing moves so quickly. So I'm getting used to it. And then Uncle Cyril went and banned us from surfing. So I was like, oh, well. there we go. You're going to have to, yeah, fishing, fishing. At least you can still fish, right? Yeah, it was a couple of bass dams and stuff like that. And like I said, now I just jump onto the skateboard. I'm like, well, I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> well, well done for doing that. It's funny. I also log myself and um, we were surfing. I mean, I've been logging for the last few years. And then for the first time in a long time, I got onto one of our fish our sort of uh, 20s to about a week and a half ago. And we were surfing Buffalo Bay. And um, it's just such an adjustment to go from a log to a 20. Yeah. And yeah, first time paddle over a wave and next thing an old tunny is going wild on the balcony there and oaks are hooting their horns and waving their hands and this 12 foot Johnny just popped up like a meter away from us, you know, and no. um, yeah, at that point I'm thinking, why am I on a 20 <laughs> at this point, you know? All the oaks are paddling in, getting in my, you know, it must have been the adrenaline, but my, my back legs started cramping up and <laughs> you've just got these visions, you know, and um, yeah. I'm just so glad I was a drive by, but we managed to get out of the water and she was, she came down to the beach and she said, as you guys paddled over the wave, it just, it passed underneath you, you know, so it was, oh, please. Oh, I wish I was on a mid length or a log, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you're lucky, you know, but. Yes. I mean, I've seen some of the videos that are coming out of like, you know, the Eastern Cape. The kid, he posted something recently. Um, yes. Where was it? It was in Plet or somewhere. Yes, I don't yeah. Know where it was. Plet. What? That, I mean, that it was, drone shot. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, we surf Musenberg a lot. We never, we never, see, I never see anything, but I mean, you can see the Seal Island just over your right shoulder and you, yeah. you've got a feeling that there's, there could be something there all the time, you know, but mm. like, I've never 
seen anything, but jeepers. Anyway, we'll move swiftly along because we don't want to create any. As soon as the beach is open, we're back in the water and we're not even thinking about that, right? <laughs> I'm leaving for Pakistan in like two and a half weeks' time. So oh, is it, eh? when the beach is open, I'm, I'm not going to get another surf until about mid March, end of March. Oh, yeah, yeah. So unless I can sneak out somewhere. Okay. Um, and I know one or two spots, so I'm just not going to say it out loud. But yeah, I can. Yeah, I know. Keep it quiet, bro. Keep it quiet. Are you heading back to, is it IPL duty? Uh, it's the Pakistan Premier League. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually not going to do the IPL this year. It's just, it's a little bit hectic, hey? That, mm. Like, the quarantine and the the whole kind of, the whole package is just a bit, it's a bit much, you know? Yeah. Um, it's probably the one tournament that pays the best, to be, to be honest with you. But they also require you to kind of get there three weeks before the tournament starts because they want everybody in tip-top shape. Whereas sure. maybe the other the other leagues, if you get there a week before, do your five days quarantine and then two days training, you're good to go. You know, so yeah. the IPL does end up being like almost like a three month tournament, which is just ridiculous. So wow. these other ones are about a month, a month and a half. So I, I'm I'm opting on those. And yeah, the first one in the calendar for me is Pakistan. So oh, yeah, okay. here, I, here I go. You know, that's it. Chop wood. Board money. <laughs> Board money, fishing money. Yeah. Oh, like and um, so you you you're in Komiki, eh? Is that right in Cape Town? Yeah. So I, I'd stay out in Komiki, which is cool. I'm actually right now. Um, I've got two places. It's it's a, it's a bit bad. I I broke my shoulder a couple of years ago, and I enjoyed surfing Komiki. And I went down on a Sunday to go and watch the guys surfing. I was just like, well, I can't surf, so I'm gonna go watch. And as I pulled into the car park there's this for sale sign on this house. And I was there with my best friend and he he's like, let's go look at this house. And I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. And we walked in and he's like, dude, you you have to buy this house. Cause I was six months out. He's like, then you fix it up. And when you fixed, you can surf and you live right here and everything. And I'm like, okay, done. I've got nothing else but time on my hands. I'm gonna fucking scrape up every cent I got and I'm gonna buy this house. So I bought the house, but I had my other house that I lived in. And I just thought it was a solid investment, you know, like my family stay there, mm. friends come down from all over and um, yeah, it's just a great place, you know. It's, it's a prime location, yeah. You know, it's, it's on the beach, it's in the car park there and um, you know, I walk out and 10 meters later, I'm in the water and yeah, it's great, you know. Um, and we actually, we're going there now. Um, so we kind of bounce between the two places. So where I cool. stay now is obviously closer to the airport and closer to all the other things that I need to do, like physio and training and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But once that all kind of quiets down and calms down, I think that will be, that'll be home, eh? permanent. Yeah. It's a beautiful, uh, we, we lived in Scarborough for just over a year. And I mean, that whole place. Oh, it's just, it's just and, such a vibe. Eh? Yeah. Scarborough, Mystic Cliffs, Komiki, we were there for, for lockdown. Um, we just said, you know, we're going to stay there for all of lockdown. And, you know, the vibe was so chilled. People were kind of like, you know, they were all obviously obeying the rules and everything like that. But guys would walk to the shops. I would regularly take a drive to Scarborough and back, whether it be on the motorbike or in the car, just to kind of get out. We'd stop at Misty Cliffs, look out, you know, we'd walk up the mountain and back down. This is before Cyril said, oh, you can have the three hour rule of breaks <laughs> and everything. Like that. And people were very chill. People were like, it's fine. You know, it's no issues. And yeah, great place to kind of live. Eh? I, yeah. I can't wait to retire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Not gonna lie. Yeah, look, I think we're all frothing to get back in the water. Eh? It's um, it's one of the hardest things that we've had to endure. I think you know all the rest of it is is tough, but like not being able to surf is just it really makes us all antsy. Yeah, you know, I very rarely get a lot of free time on my hands because um, I'm always playing. You know, and now I've got like. The whole of January to kind of enjoy myself before I go to Pakistan and I, you know, I, it's right there. Can't get in the water, you know. Oh. So that sucks, well, but okay. is what it is. Dale, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I really do appreciate um, what no, you. No issues. Yeah. I'm not in any particular rush. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's so lucky to. I mean, I mean, I've always been a cricket supporter. Um, I, I did the whole England thing as well. Went over there. Couldn't take the weather, couldn't take the the vibe, just missed the ocean. Um, but also, you know, when you're living when you're living abroad, you become even more of a sort of supporter of the of the teams. You know, 
whether it's cricket or rugby. So it's always it's always been a th- thing that I've kept an eye on. It's, and it's so lacquer to to finally get to chat to you. But it's also such such a cool thing to see that you know your love now is so connected to the ocean and surfing and and, and you know fishing. And yet here you this really you, you're the darling of SA cricket. You were at number one. I saw the stat the other day. You were the number one bowler in the world for. 260 how many weeks 263 yeah, weeks or something like that you know, I, I didn't even know that actually somebody sent that to me and, and i don't you know what i hate putting stuff out like that but i was like <laughs> yeah every now and then you know what i mean because i think you're a very humble oak you come across as a very humble oak and every now and then like you say it's just it's just like it to go hey you know what i've worked hard for this and yeah. um Hashtag Roger Fedra. Keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, that was yeah, funny. Well, there's, a, there's probably, uh, I've probably got two more years cricket. Um, and then, yeah, then there's a lot of, uh, there's going to be a lot of playing. Hey, I'm just, I mean, getting back into the skating now, I'm absolutely, I absolutely love it. I think because when I was like 19, 20, I, genuinely was good enough where I thought I was going to go one of two ways. I could either go on the path of trying to become a professional skateboarder mm-hmm. um, or I'm going to play cricket. And because um, skating back then was different, you know, like if, if somebody was rolling up and doing a flip into like a, a grind or something like that, that was mind blowing. That was 20 years ago, you know, and now it's the norm. Now, you know, you roll up and you flip into something and you flip out of things. So if you were doing it 20 years ago, people were like, what are you doing? You know, you should, you should be sponsored and you should go yeah. and become a pro. And I was like, well, f- that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to Pretoria and I'm going to try and become a, a, a pro skateboarder. But at the same time, I was playing cricket and skateboarding wasn't paying me anything. So, mm. um, but then I was getting paid to play cricket. So eventually I had to like make this decision. Yeah. And you know, I went the cricket route. And the, the, the strange thing is that all the guys that I skated with 20 years ago, they still, they still skate now. Like Hubert and Janssen van Staden, they own plunky skateboards. And, you know, I see all these guys, they, they open up like baseline skate shop and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Session magazine. And these are all the guys that I'd seen. They may not have known who I was. I mean, Janssen and Hubert do know me, but like, I see they, they're still in the game. They're still, they're still part of the skate scene, you know? Which yeah, is, definitely. I guess I could have gone that route, you know? That's the yeah. crazy thing. And I think, I think if it was as big and as, well, even in the States, because I myself um, used to skate back in the day, and I sent Sven Martin. Do you remember a dude called Sven, Sven Martin? Yes, yeah. He, was, so, he became a photographer, I think, or a snowboard yes. photographer. Yeah, yeah, mountain, bike, mountain biking. And I actually found an old photograph because we, we were in a, we used to ride this bowl in well it was an emptied out swimming pool in peter peter in peter no in peter maritzburg and it was this gnarly like square pool but you, you could like get up onto the coping and that and there was an event there and i was in the same heat as sven and um he knocked me out because he was just like next level like in dallas and those boys you know but i found an old photograph in my in my album and i I sent it to him on instagram he's like oh dude that board was so cool you know i remember it and it's just so lack it to to I think skating in, in the in the early nineties, you know, was such a when Steve Caballero and like Tony was going ballistic and Sal Messakela was like on X Games giving it horns, you know. Um it's it's very lucky to 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 relive it and chat about it, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I'm actually I, I'm I'm Cancerian, so I'm a bit of a hoarder, you know. I like I keep things and I, I'm so bummed because I think in my move to Cape Town I lost a bunch of stuff and you, you'll remember the Blunt magazine before session. Yeah, of they course. Magazine, and it was made out of like like toilet paper, basically, yeah. you know, like back then. Anyway, I had I was in there a couple of times. Like I would send stuff in there and then they would put it in the magazine and then they would be kind enough to send the pictures back, which is really cool, you know. Oh, wow. And um, I had that stuff up until maybe a couple of years ago where it's just everything went missing. And I, yeah. you know, I wish I could get it back when I was like, you know, I was I was in that stuff. I was quite I was quite happy about and proud of that. Yeah, for sure. We're getting some boards pressed actually in the next few weeks, so we'll send you one. You can stick so it up genuine. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. As part of the feral feral life brand, we're having some some boards pressed and amazing. Yeah, we'll send you one, bro. Well, I'll pop in. I'll go into the house to Anton. Anton. I, I had a nice chat to him the other day. I went in to go and see um, uh, Keeper. Um, 
Oh, you, yes, you work you. Yes. And uh, yeah, I made the biggest mistake too. I, I went to go and visit a friend of mine. I had my board, my longboard on the roof of my car. And I was going up this little hill. And I was like, can I make it? Am I like, am I too high? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you can come. And he couldn't see my board. You know, I've got a defender. It's very high. Yeah. And as I hit like to the top, I just heard that noise. And my Crunch. fin brewed fin ripped out ripped the fin box oh out. no i had the same issue yeah funnily enough i had the same same thing happen to me a few weeks ago it was a fin box out like woolworth's you know that thing that hangs <laughs> i forgot it was there <laughs> it's terrible i wish like when, when i told friends that yeah I, I busted my board and they're like oh what board is it i'm like it's a dead kooks it's you know beautiful fin made you know by yeah. eden and they're like, oh, what happened? Did you like, did you like, were you surfing and did you do this crazy, like, you know, maneuver and you hit the sand or what was it? I'm like, no, I drove it off. I hit the roof. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Oh. I, I tell you, I was actually hot broken. Eh? But that's why, that's why I popped in because um, uh, I think you had my board. He was fixing the, he was fixing the fin box and I was lucky enough to spend like 20 minutes and talking to Anton because he's also been shaping now for Deus. He was, he was doing yeah. some stuff with Deus or something like that. So yeah, they, they, they asked him to be their, their head shaper in Africa, you know? Um, but Anton, I mean, he's been shaping for, you know, upwards of 35 years and, um, he was mentored by like the likes of John Whitmore and John Palm and the Iceman and like the, the, the old legends. Eh? I would, I'm trying to get my hands on one of those John Whitmores. Like, they are impossible, you know? Yeah. Like, there's a couple I've seen floating around. People are asking ridiculous prices for them. Crazy. Um, I just wanted to try one and just see what it feels like to ride something that was made in, like, the 50s, you know, yeah. the 60s or whatever. Have you been on any, like, I mean, what's the most exotic surf locations you've surfed? Um, so, a friend of mine, uh, Will and Roxy uh, Davis, they, they own Surf Emporium. Um, okay. And I just became, I became good friends with them, and I'd get boards to use there and everything like that. And, and they said we got to go to Bali. We got to do a trip to Bali. So I'm like, all right, let's do Bali. And um, so the first time we went to Bali it was quite an eye opener. I like warm water first time, longest paddles I've ever had in my life to get because I was like surfing these reefs that are jeepers, you know, and they don't have a boat. But anyway, um, the second time to Bali was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I did a little bit more homework. It was a okay. year later. And um, yeah, we, we surfed a ton of different places in Bali itself and then popped over to the neighboring islands, Nusa Lebong and Nusa Panita. And there was, there's a couple of different places that you can surf their playgrounds and lacerations and all these places. And they're a bit wild for the log, but you know, I, on yeah. the smaller days, that was fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the first time I did a, like an actual surf trip. I was like, this is the goal is to go surfing. Mm -hmm. And I, I roped my friend in with me because he loves fishing. He doesn't surf, but I roped him. I said, we'll do fishing. And we never cast, a, we never cast one line when we were there, but <laughs> I got him in the water. But um, yeah, but I've managed to also every, every cricket trip that I do, I always try and if we got a week off or a couple of days off, I try and find somewhere to go. So last year we were in Australia and we flew up to Byron Bay and spent three days in Byron Bay, surfed the pass there. That was Beautiful. amazing. And then um, Sri Lanka, like um, I was in Sri Lanka a couple of times and we try to get some waves there and even India, um, uh, in India on the East Coast. What is the place called? I don't even remember what it's called, but yeah, there's, there's one or two places there. John T actually put me in touch with this guy there. He's got Surf Shack. And when I mean Surf Shack it is like palm trees, like on wood. Wow. And he's got all the boards that are in there, I'll send you a picture. All the boards that are in there are all like donated, like through surfers that have come through there and they've gone, oh, this guy's got nothing. And then they leave their board. They even leave board shorts. And How cool like, is that, eh? Yeah, it's so cool. And then he's got a little Facebook page and um, yeah, we met up with him and we surfed this little point there and it was amazing, you know? Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's and, so uh, and they don't they can't get things like wax, you know, like surf wax and like stuff like that. So it's a bit tricky because now you find, oh, I like this board and you pull it out and there's no wax on it. You know, it's all <laughs> worn down. And then you've got to make a plan or something. Oh, well, I suppose if there's no wax, there's no wax, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, those are crazy stories that are like, they're cool, you know, like 
you can pay all the money in the world to go to the best places, but sometimes those little shitty things like that are actually even better. You know, like little yeah, they stick in your stick in your memory forever, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I managed to surf kind of all over the place when I can. Yeah, very lacquer, very lacquer. <laughs> well, we hope to see you in the water um, in Cape Town at some point, and uh, yeah, Thank you. we'll um, like I said, we'll send you a deck and we'll just keep chatting to you and. I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up from our side, but um, we really really appreciate it, Dale. No pleasure. Thank you. I'm um, I must come. I must pop in sometime. I mean, I'm worried about Buffalo's buy, but like uh, <laughs> I've done a couple of trips up to J Bay now. Yeah. So maybe on the way back or on the way there, I'll stop off for a day and just like oh, no. Vic Bay close. Vic Bay is not Vic. Vic Bay is right on our doorstep, and believe it or not, I'm not gonna say this. We've got a secret little location. We'll show you when you come. Okay. Yeah, but, but we've, we've, we've got a little Airbnb. Yeah, you, you just pull in and we've got a place for you yeah. to stay. Oh, that's I've, what I've discovered also. What's amazing is that, you know, going overseas is great. Don't get me wrong. It's fucking amazing. Okay. Um, but like there's so many nice little places just along the South African coast that I wouldn't mind that are two, three hours drive from my house, you know, so I can go yeah. spend a weekend. Like, and most people do that. We just, we just don't think that small. We think a little bit too big sometimes a little bit too wild you know gotta to go to yeah. indo gotta to go to australia and spend my year's worth of money on this one trip when you can do little things like this which are pretty fucking cool you know yeah this east coast is littered with little little spots and when they work they work you know you think of places like flares flares by even like in mossel bay there's outers and inners i mean they just gem of of a spot so if you can get them on the right day you know yeah, I, I was I played cricket in PE and you know I didn't I'd I'd heard of Cape St. Francis a bunch of times and I went down to J Bay and it wasn't on and someone said, Listen, let's go down to Seals and I'm like, Okay, cool and then surfed Seals and I met Simon Fish who was there and he hooked me up with a board and I was like, This is the best place I've ever surfed in my life and I, I didn't I just didn't think about it, you know, I just didn't think that it was there. And then Hewlett's is there. Obviously they're well known and I didn't realise it at the time, but like now I'm like, yeah, let's go to let's go to Bali. I'm like, no, let's just drive six hours up the road. Exactly, it's save a lot of money, a lot of time, and uh, reduce our carbon footprint. Yeah, and also I don't have to bump into a thousand Aussies asking me <laughs> what am I doing in Bali. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. <laughs> cool, man, Dale. Really appreciate it. You enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. And um, oh, thank you. Massive thanks. Huge respect, dude. And, absolute, um, absolute pleasure. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime. Sorry, I, I got it completely wrong with the times. Don't stress, bro. We made it happen. That's that's all that counts. Like it, like it, dude. Have a good one. All right, Steve. Thanks. Cheers, Have a great bro. weekend, bro. You too, bro. Bye. Bye.